Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for the time. Um, as Mando mentioned, I am based here at Faxet uh, in London, um, working as a portfolio risk and, and quantitative uh, analytics application specialist. Uh, so my role within the, the organization is really to work with our clients using our uh, back testing tools, our simulation, and our optimization products uh, to help them make the most of the, the research in, in, in that space. And we were asked by our, our friends at Ravenpack to, to give a short presentation this afternoon on uh, some of our observations and insights in the use of news analytics um, in and around factor-driven uh, investment strategies. So over the next 25 minutes or so, uh, there are really three main areas that I'd like to, to cover. Uh, the first is a little bit of background to, to the presentation. Um, where did the ideas come from and ultimately what were we looking to, to present upon? Uh, next, I'll be taking a look at uh, the use of news analytics as an investment signal in its own right. Um, is there some value in, in investing in companies that have a strong news sentiment, positive news sentiment? Uh, and does that uh, suggest or is that indicative of uh, outperformance through time? Finally, um, I'll be looking to, uh, to see whether it's possible to use uh, news sentiment alongside more traditional fact strategies. Um, ultimately looking to build uh, a composite approach to, to factor investing uh, and ultimately really trying to make sure that we can, we can develop uh, more intelligent fact signals. Uh, is there a way that we can combine sentiment uh, to do this? So, uh, to begin with a little bit of the, uh, the background to the presentation, um, in March this year, Factset partnered with Ravenpack to integrate a subset of the news analytics data onto our platform. And while this is by, by no means the full content set that is available from Ravenpack, it does provide us with a number of particularly interesting uh, uh, indicators or signals from a, a quantitative investment perspective. Um, as Peter mentioned, uh, earlier this, uh, during summer, uh, one of my colleagues uh, based in our New York office, uh, a chap by the name of Joe Portico, uh, produced a, a piece for our risk blog, uh, something that we, we know as Facts at Insight, uh, on the use of uh, the Ravenpack uh, new sentiment signal. Uh, in a, a particular U.S. market. Uh, now, Joe's, Joe's blog uh, focused on a, a U.S. A small cap benchmark, so the, the Russell 2000 benchmark, um, and looked to see whether there was any persistence with uh, stocks that had a high new sentiment and outperformance over subsequent periods. So could we use new sentiment as, a, as an investment signal uh, in that particular market? And other, the research uh, suggested that that is possible, um, that new sentiment, strong new sentiment for a, a stock uh, does drive uh, performance, and that we could see that association quite, quite clearly. So what we wanted to do today was really take that as a, as a foundation of the research and try and apply the themes to the European market. Could we pick up what we'd seen uh, in the US market and, and apply uh, to Europe? Uh, and then if we were to take that one step further, could we use new sentiment uh, as the basis of uh, enhancing uh, some more traditional factor strategies? Uh, and if so, how would they, they work? So, um, I want to begin with a, a review of one of the key indicators that we have uh, integrated onto FactSet from the Ravenpack database, which is uh, the 91-day aggregated sentiment strength uh, indicator. Um, as Peter mentioned, this is, this is typically seen as a, a, as a fairly long-term uh, measure of, of new sentiment. Uh, and I'll, I'll refer to this as, uh, simply as a sentiment strength throughout the, the, the presentation, uh, rather than the 91-day. In order to test the, the signal um, in Europe, I uh, carried out a fairly straightforward back test. Um, I took uh, an investable universe that consisted of uh, the MSCI Europe. Uh, I ran this from the end of December 2000 through to the end of December 2014. Every month, I took the constituents of MSCI Europe and I sorted the constituents uh, based on each security's sentiment strength uh, from highest to lowest. Um, I then partitioned the universe into, into five uh, separate baskets, uh, five quintiles of stock, uh, which were driven by, uh, by their underlying sentiment. So in our top quintile, uh, we would have stocks that had high positive uh, new sentiment. And in the, the fifth quintile, stocks that had uh, low or negative new sentiment. Um, for each stock from the, the back test date, uh, I then captured the, uh, the return from the, the, the rebalance date through to the end of the subsequent month. Uh, so essentially what we can think of as the, the one month forward return for, for each of these securities. So, um, in order to take a look at the, the signal uh, and see whether there's inf any information behind it, um, I wanted to really start with uh, a factor return profile. Um, if we were to take each of our, our factor baskets and look at the average annualized return of these securities, uh, what was the profile uh, looking like? How did that suggest the factor would work? Um, on the chart here, we have each of our uh, different uh, quintile portfolios. Um, 
on the, the far left, in blue, we have the average annualized return of all securities that fell into the top quintile uh, of MSCI Europe on the rebalance date uh, based on their, their sentiment strength. On the right, we have in yellow um, all securities that fell into the fifth quintile, so stocks that had a lower new sentiment uh, strength uh, on the rebalance date. If we take a look at the, uh, the return distribution, we can see that it is largely monotonic. Um, stocks that have higher media sentiment towards them uh, out, tend to outperform stocks that have lower media sentiment. Uh, and if we take a look at our top quintile, um, we're generating around uh, a little over 8% uh, average annualized return uh, in that basket of stocks. Uh, and we can see that that would typically outperform the, uh, the second quintile, uh, highlighted in red, uh, by around 2.5% uh, each year, thereabouts. So having calculated the, the return profile, we could then take this one step further and look at the, the risk profile of each of these baskets of securities. Um, again, uh, in this case, we're looking at the average annualized volatility of stocks based on the standard deviation of the returns throughout the history of the backtest. On the, the left, again, we have in blue uh, the top quintile portfolios, stocks that show a strong uh, sentiment strength towards them on each of the backtest dates. Uh, and on the, the right, in yellow, we have the, the low sentiment securities. Uh, stocks that uh, have low or negative uh, new sentiment. Um, again, looking at the, the distribution, we can see that as we move along, um, uh, as we look at stocks that have lower new sentiment, lower media sentiment towards them, um, the volatility increases. So what we can take from this is that we can see a slightly higher return profile in the top quintile stocks uh, and a slightly lower risk profile. And we can capture the two of these together uh, and build effectively a sentiment profile for uh, our MSCI Europe uh, throughout the range of the backtest. Um, here, uh, running along the, the x-axis, we have each of the quintile portfolios. So um, our fractal 1 uh, on the far left, uh, fractal 5 on the far right. Uh, the blue columns indicate the average annualized return of each of our baskets, and the red, uh, the average annualized volatility. Um, we can then capture the, uh, the risk-adjusted return through the use of the, uh, the Sharpe ratio. Uh, and again, as we look across the fractal distribution, we can see that there is a more desirable risk-to-return payoff as we move uh, along the baskets, uh, with our top uh, fractal portfolio generating around 34 basis points of, of return uh, for each unit of risk, and our fifth quintile portfolio generating around seven basis points. Having captured the, the history of the return uh, profile, we were then able to look at each of these baskets of stocks as individual factor portfolios. Uh, the factor portfolio has been defined by their, their new sentiment. Um, in this particular chart, we, uh, we have the, the cumulative returns of each of our fractal portfolios. Um, index to zero uh, at the, the start date of the backtest uh, and calculated on a cumulative, a cumulative equal weighted basis. Um, in the shaded bar at the bottom, uh, we have the MSCI Europe uh, calculated on a cap weighted basis. Uh, so around 48%, uh, percent, a little under 50% uh, return over the 14 years. As we look across the, the cumulative returns for each of our, our factor portfolios, we can see that the, the top basket is, is outperforming, um, generates around 203% return over the 14-year history uh, on an equal weighted basis in, in this case. Now, while it does seem that we are able to, um, to invest in securities that have uh, high sentiment towards them, um, it is possible to generate slightly improved performance by moving further into the tails of the, the factor distribution. In this case, we, we took a look at, at two separate uh, strategies based around uh, strong sentiment strength uh, for stocks in the MSCI Europe. Uh, again, running along the, the, the bottom of the x-axis, we have the, the MSCI Europe for, for reference. Um, and then our two uh, portfolios that we've created here are, first of all, our, our equal weighted top quintile of sentiment strength, uh, the 203% uh, return that we saw previously. Now, based on um, MSCI Europe, uh, at various points throughout the backtest date, the top quintile would represent anywhere between 80 and 100 securities. If we were to go further into the tail and actually look at a subset of those securities, in this case, the top 50, we can see that that would generate a slightly higher performance uh, over the, the course of the backtest. So, um, based on what we've seen looking at the, the factory in isolation itself, um, it would suggest that there is some information, there is some value in the idea of investing in securities based on uh, new sentiment uh, in European markets. So very similar to what we, we found in our, our risk post earlier in the year based on the Russell 2000. Uh, information does seem to, to pass across uh, into Europe. What I wanted to do now was to really look at this in, in a couple of different ways and see whether we could use new sentiment as a basis of enhancing uh, 
some more traditional factor strategies. So rather than looking at sentiment in isolation, could you use that as a, as a more composite-based uh, approach? So in order to approach this, I, um, I looked at two separate uh, ways of constructing uh, baskets of stocks. Um, the first was a, a composite multi-factor strategy. Um, within this, uh, the idea was to take some fairly standard, fairly traditional uh, investment strategies and uh, compare those to a sentiment-enhanced version of each of these strategies, essentially built in a, a, an equal-weighted composite of our traditional strategy with the, the sentiment strength signal. The second approach was to see whether we could use new sentiment as the basis of a trade execution strategy. So when we were looking at rebalancing our portfolio, could we use new sentiment as a means of determining which stocks to trade into uh, first and how we would need to do that? So um, if we begin with the composite multi-factor approach, um, in this particular case, again, I, I ran a, a fairly straightforward backtest using the MSCI Europe as my, my reference index. I use the same 14-year period, so at the end of December uh, 2000 through to the end of December 2014 and um, captured the, the MSCI Europe at each month end, uh, so calculated a monthly rebalance. I also captured the, the one month return for each security from the rebalance date through to the end of the subsequent month. And as before, partitioned the universe into uh, five quintiles based on a number of different uh, factors. So first I, I took three fairly straightforward, fairly standard uh, factor strategies. Um, the first of this was a, an income-based approach, which uh, was defined as a securities uh, trailing 12-month dividend yield. The second was a medium-term momentum approach, which looked at the latest 12-month return of a, of a security, uh, excluding the most recent month. Uh, and finally, uh, I looked at a value strategy, which was uh, built from an equal-weighted composite of uh, trailing one-year earnings to price and trailing one-year book to price. So three fairly straightforward uh, approaches. And in each case, when we partitioned our universe, stocks with high exposures to these factors would be placed in quintile one. Stocks with low exposure would be placed in quintile five. I then generated three um, sentiment-enhanced versions of these strategies. Uh, and in each case, this was simply taking an equal-weighted composite of the traditional factor strategy and uh, sentiment strength, uh, combining the two uh, in, in, on an equal-weighted basis. So again, if we were to look at the return profile of each of our uh, factor signals, um, we can start to see a couple of things that come through here. Um, running along the, uh, the bottom of the chart, we have each of our different factor strategy approaches. Um, on the far left, we have our, our income strategy, uh, followed by income and sentiment, uh, momentum, momentum and sentiment, and finally value and value and sentiment. Um, within each factor, we have the, each of the quintile portfolios, um, the, annualized, uh, the average annualized return uh, of each of those quintile portfolios. Again, uh, in blue on the, the left-hand side, our top quintile portfolio through to the bottom quintile portfolio in yellow on the right. Now, as we see, as we look across the, the, the strategies, uh, the different distributions, we can see that um, the sentiment enhanced version of each of these strategies uh, seems to impose a much more uniform structure uh, in the return decomposition. Uh, the return profile is much more uh, monotonic, as we, as we can see. Uh, but also, in addition to that, our top quintile portfolios um, see improved performance where we, we look at a sentiment enhanced version of the traditional factor strategy. And we can see that a little bit closer as we look at just the, the top fractile portfolios uh, of each of these approaches. Uh, so again, wherever we have the, the sentiment enhanced version, uh, the return profile, the average annualized return was, was slightly higher. If we take a look at the risk adjusted return, we see very, very similar trends. Um, again, looking at the, the strategies along the bottom uh, and the quintile portfolios within, um, we do see a much more uniform distribution of the Sharpe ratio uh, across our sentiment enhanced version of each of these factors. Um, and in addition, as we look at the top quintile portfolio, the, the, the Sharpe ratio is improved uh, in each case. In fact, as we look across a range of, of key characteristics for each of these top quintile portfolios, we can see that there is improvement uh, across the board. Um, the returns are, are improved, whether that be on an absolute basis or an active basis relative to uh, MSCI Europe. Uh, the volatility is reduced. Um, Sharpe ratio and information ratio both increase. Uh, and finally, the percentage of periods in which our sentiment-enhanced versions of our factors outperform the benchmark uh, rise. So whether that be against the benchmark overall or whether it's against the benchmark in an up market or a down market. Again, we can uh, see that it is possible to, to generate slightly increased return if we move further into those uh, factor distribution tails. 
Um, again, in this case, we have uh, our MSCI Europe run on the bottom for, for reference, and we have four different factor strategies, uh, starting with the top quintile of sentiment strength, uh, followed by top quintile of income uh, in isolation, income and sentiment uh, as a composite factor, and then income and sentiment based on just the, the top 50 securities uh, as defined by that factor. So it would suggest that there is it is possible to build a, a composite factor that does outperform, uh, taking account of new sentiment. So what I wanted to do from, from this point is really to see whether it is possible to use uh, new sentiment as the basis of trade execution strategy. Now, unlike my previous approach, um, rather than run a, a straightforward research backtest, um, here I used a, a slightly more sophisticated portfolio uh, construction simulation. Um, again, the, uh, the reference universe was the MSCI Europe, um, taken from the end of December 2000 to the end of December 2014. Um, I captured a, a month-end uh, rebalance approach and calculated one-month uh, returns for, for each of my securities uh, within the universe. I then defined uh, three different simulations. Um, now, the, the simulations were designed to be a, a trade-based simulation. So uh, define trading rules which specified which securities to buy and which securities to sell. Uh, the first simulation was designed to capture all securities that fell into the top quintile of uh, MSCI Europe based on my value strategy, so the composite of uh, earnings to price and book to price. Um, it would then sell any securities that were held in the portfolio that fell outside the top quintile uh, on subsequent rebalance dates. In order to determine how to, to buy stocks within the top quintile, uh, the simulation used the absolute value of the, uh, the value signal itself. So if we imagine a, a top quintile portfolio containing 10 stocks, the first security that would be bought would be the stock with the highest exposure to our value signal. The second stock would be the second highest exposure to our value signal, and so on. I then created a second simulation which was based on sentiment strength alone. So much like the, the value strategy, uh, this was designed to buy the top quintile of MSCI Europe based on, on sentiment strength. Uh, again, the trade execution rules uh, suggested that it would buy the first stock within the top quintile uh, based on the highest sentiment uh, strength signal. For each strategy, um, the, the target weights in new purchases were set at around 2%. So ultimately, we were looking to create a basket of around 50 stocks uh, on the first rebalance date and carry that forward. The final simulation that we included was uh, a sentiment enhanced version of, of the value strategy. So here, we were purchasing the top securities, uh, the top quintile of securities uh, of MSCI Europe based on the value signal, but the execution order was based on the size of a, a stock's sentiment strength. So within the top quintile of value, the first security that would be bought would be the single stock uh, within that top quintile that had the highest sentiment strength signal. So um, as we look at the, the return profile of each of these strategies, um, in this case, we're looking at a weighted cumulative return uh, indexed to 100 at the, the start of the simulation. Um, first of all, what we see is that our, our value strategy uh, generates around 325% uh, uh, on uh, a weighted basis throughout this period. The sentiment strength uh, strategy in isolation, uh, it, it slightly outperforms this, this particular approach, uh, a little higher return uh, over the 14-year the history. However, the composite strategy uh, significantly outperformed both of these uh, simulations uh, in this particular case. Now, while this does suggest that it is possible to combine the signals to generate better performance, what we wanted to do is really get a sense of how much of that alpha we could capture and retain. Um, now, obviously, with the sentiment uh, strategies, as Peter mentioned earlier, they can be seen as, as fairly high turnover strategies. So, obviously, that incurs higher transaction costs and it eats into the alpha that we can generate. So, what we decided to do here was take a look at some of the turnover statistics of each of our, our simulations. Um, within the grid, uh, we have running along the top each of the simulation. Uh, and on the left-hand side, we have the average turnover statistics for each of these. So if we take a look at our value strategy, which we can think of as a, as a fairly low turnover strategy, we're trading on average around eight securities every month uh, throughout the 14-year history. And we're looking at turning over just under 11.5% of the portfolio. Uh, sentiment, uh, we were looking at trading around four to six securities every month, so uh, as we say, quite high turnover, uh, and around 98% of the portfolio, so fairly significant amount of, of turnover in that, that approach. Finally, using sentiment as the basis of trade execution within a value strategy, we were able to reduce the turnover uh, quite significantly. Um, we were actually turning over uh, around tra eight, or trading eight securities uh, on average each month, uh, with total portfolio turnover of a little over 14%. So moving that much closer towards um, 
the value strategy. So, uh, what do we find with, with the, the research based in Europe? Um, well, first of all, it does seem that there is an association between uh, positive new sentiment for securities and uh, outperformance in subsequent periods. So there definitely seems to be some value in, in new sentiment as, a, as an investment signal. Uh, but what I, I find particularly interesting is how we can use new sentiment in combination with traditional factors, in combination with uh, quite a lot of the, the well-known uh, investment strategies uh, to produce signals that are not only uh, slightly better performing, but have uh, better risk-adjusted returns, uh, potentially lower turnover, ultimately looking to, to create smarter, more intelligent investment signals. Thank you very much. So we have time for perhaps one question. Thanks. Um, so y your case studies were focusing on more uh, stock selection. Have you done any case studies on more maybe index level um, country versus country or sector versus sector um, studies? We haven't as yet. Um, that was, was definitely something that we, we started thinking about. Uh, obviously, when we were looking at the Russell 2000, that's a single country. Um, so it's, it's a fairly concise uh, example to look at. Uh, Europe, I, I definitely believe that, that there will be some, some country effects. Um, I'd, be, I'd be genuinely interested to, to take a look into that further and, and see if we can see anything there. Uh, but at this stage, we, we haven't. 